You are about to hear a telephone conversation between a man and a woman about a rental property. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 7. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 7. Central Realty, Jill speaking. How can I help you? Yes, hello Jill. I've got a problem, a complaint I wish to register. Who should I speak to? You'll want to speak to Tracy, the residential manager. Just a moment and I'll put you through. Thanks. Hello, this is Tracy. I understand your rent is going to be increased. Yes, this is why I'm calling. I was told that my rent would not be increased for the length of my six-month contract, which I signed only four months ago. What's going on? Is my landlord allowed to do this? I see. Yes. Okay. That seems strange. Look, can I take down some of your particulars, and I'll register a formal complaint to the landlord on your behalf? Yes, sure. That'd be good. Firstly, name and address contact details. Yes, Jane McSweeney. That's M-C-S-W-E-E-N-Y. 3 Mauger Street. That's M-A-U-G-H-E-R Street. Windery, 3355. And the phone there? Yes, you can contact me on 334756, extension 3176. I generally arrive home by 6 o'clock in the evening, so you can call me around that time, but not after 9. Oh, sorry, 8.30, because that's the time I leave for work. Okay, so I should note down that the problem is that your landlord wants to raise your rent. And when did you first move in? Yes, well, the contract began on August 1st, and... Oh, hang on. Sorry, that's the ending date. We actually moved in on February the 1st. Before you listen to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 8 to 10. Okay. Good. Now, if need be, you will have to send a letter to the Rental Tenancy Board. But as I said, first let us approach your landlord on your behalf and see if we can work out the problem before it gets to that situation. I'd be very surprised if you have to send the letter. 95% of these kinds of problems get solved early on. Okay. Now, if you have any problems you need to discuss, feel free to come in and talk with the general manager. In the meantime, if you would just wait until we receive an answer from your landlord, we'll be able to then plan our next step. Is there anything else I could be doing? Well, you could write a letter to the RTB listing all the events as they happened from your point of view. But as I say, hold on to it. Don't send it unless we have to. Well, that's about it for now. Thanks for your call. I'm sure we can sort this out. Thanks very much for your help. I hope we can sort it out too. Bye for now. Yes, bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear the director of a new art centre speaking to a group of local people who have come to hear what the new art centre will be offering. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15.
Listen carefully to the first part of the talk and answer questions 11 to 15. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you all for turning out on this cold, wet evening. Welcome to our new art centre. I'm delighted that so many people are interested in finding out about the facilities and events that we'll be offering. I'll start with the regular evening events that we've scheduled so far. Sunday night will be film club night. Each week we'll be showing a classic film from the 40s, 50s or 60s. Films will start at quarter to seven and afterwards there will be an opportunity to discuss the film in the cafe bar for anybody who'd like to. Tickets for the film will be five pounds, but the discussion afterwards is free. Although anybody who wants to buy me a drink is welcome to do so. <laughs> On Thursday evenings at 7.30, the auditorium is given over to productions by touring theatre companies. This coming Thursday, we're very excited to be welcoming Pizzazz, a drama company featuring both able-bodied and physically handicapped actors. They'll be performing a rather special version of William Shakespeare's The Tempest, featuring music and dance, as well as dialogue. Fridays and Saturdays will be music nights, starting at 8 p.m., with classical or traditional music on the Fridays and pop rock on the Saturdays. However, as the sound system hasn't yet been fully installed, these events won't be starting for another few weeks. As well as evening performances, various events will take place during the day. So far, a mother's and toddler's session has been arranged for Monday afternoons, and of course, anybody can drop in for a coffee or a sandwich. The cafe bar will be open from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Mondays to Fridays and 11 a.m. to midnight Saturdays and Sundays. Lunch will be served from half past 12 till 2 and light snacks will be available all day. Of course, this programme is just the start and we expect to be announcing many additional events in the near future. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about becoming a member. Membership benefits include reduced price tickets, priority bookings and a monthly newsletter, which will feature the latest details of forthcoming events, plus details of other arts events in the local area. The cost of membership is just £15 a year, which I think is very reasonable. To get a membership card, you'll need to provide us with a passport-sized photo, plus payment of course, by cash or cheque. We can't accept credit cards, I'm afraid, at least not for the moment. We hope to have credit card payment facilities available in the not-too-distant future. Then, when you want to buy reduced price tickets, you simply show your card at the box office or quote your membership number if you're making a telephone booking. Generally, a membership card will save around 20% on the full ticket price, so it really is very good value. Now we come to the most important part, your suggestions. It's your art centre, so we want to hear what you'd like to see. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute 
to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between a university student and a librarian about using the city archives. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. As you listen to the first part of the conversation, answer questions 21 to 24. Hello. I was wondering if you could give me some information about using the archives? I'd be happy to. Are you a resident of the city? Actually, I live just outside the city, but I study at the university downtown. That's fine. All you need to do is show your university identification card and you can use the archives at no charge, as long as your ID card is current, of course. Yes, it's valid. So I don't have to pay anything? No, city residents pay an annual fee, but students can use the archives for free. Everyone else needs to get special permission from the director, but that doesn't apply to you, of course. Oh, good. I was also wondering about the schedule. I have classes every day, Monday through Friday, and I also have a part-time job so I could really only use the archives on weekends. That's not a problem at all. We're open all weekend. Actually, the only day we're closed is Monday, so you can come any day, Tuesday through Sunday. Are you open in the evenings? Yes, we're open from 9.30 in the morning until 8.30 in the evening. That will fit my schedule well. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Is there something else I can help you with? Yes. One thing I'll be needing to see for one of my class projects is old photographs. Do you have photographs of the city in the 19th century that I could look at? Yes, we store all the photographs in the basement. Those stairs over there will take you down to the photography collection. Just tell the librarian there what you're interested in and he'll help you. Those would be 19th century photographs? Yes, the entire collection is there. Now, if you're interested in seeing documents from the 19th century, those are right here on the ground floor. I would like to see some of those documents. Does that collection include newspapers too? No, all the newspapers from the earliest ones in the 18th century up to the current time are on the second floor. Here, let me just give you this map of the archives and you'll be able to find whatever it is you need. Thank you. Oh, I see you have a whole room devoted to maps. Yes, on the third floor. That's great, because one thing I need to do is look at how the city has developed over time. I'm sure you'll find a lot of helpful information there. Of course, some of the maps are several centuries old so generally visitors are only allowed to see photographic reproductions of them. That shouldn't be a problem. What's this on the fourth floor, Ogden's Woolen Mill? As I'm sure you know, 
Ogden's woolen mill was the major entity responsible for the growth of this city in the 19th century. The Ogdeneers gave money for the archives to devote an entire floor to information about the history of the mill. Will I be able to find information about the Ogden family there? Photographs, personal papers, things like that? Probably the family photographs are stored downstairs in the photography collection. The personal papers would be on the fifth floor, where we keep all the personal papers of famous residents of our city. Thank you so much for your help. I'll be able to do a lot of my research here. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear part of a career's advice talk on working freelance. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Working for an employer in a 9 to 5 job has long been the accepted norm. However, this could soon be set to change. A rising level of unemployment, combined with a sense of disillusionment amongst employees with their workaday lives, is at the root of this modern day revolution in the workplace. Now, there is a growing trend amongst people of all ages and from all walks of life to opt for freelance work rather than working for an employer. It sounds a risky option and a potentially stressful one, but on the whole, the benefits of freelancing seem to vastly outweigh those of working for someone else. In fact, Recent research has shown that those who quit their jobs to work for themselves are the country's happiest and most productive workers. A study conducted by Dr Jonathan Sapsed from Brighton University's Business School in conjunction with the Arts and Humanities Research Council looked at a total of 304 freelancers who were pursuing a range of professions in southern England. They found that, far from struggling to get by, many were not only doing well, but excelling in their new professions. So, what are the advantages of freelancing? Well, there are many. One of the most obvious benefits is not having to be answerable to a boss and having to face criticism or unfair demands. In addition, not being based in an office or shared workplace with competitive or difficult colleagues is another bonus. But what is probably the most attractive pull of working freelance is the freedom to determine your own work schedule. You are no longer at the mercy of a timetable dictated to you by your employer. If you have family commitments, these can easily be fitted around your working hours. Furthermore, 
If you have an off day one day, it's easy to make up time another day without having to face your employer's wrath when you are being less productive than usual. Those who work in creative and digital industries stand to benefit most from working freelance. In these fields, workers are at liberty to choose their ideal working location as they are not restricted to working in a set place. It really is an ideal lifestyle that many would aspire to if they were more aware of the options available to them. Lastly, to add to an already convincing list of benefits from doing freelance work, there is the financial reward. Freelancers typically work a 38-hour week and earn a median wage of £43,000, well above the national average of £25,000, and are happier than other workers. It seems that people are now catching on to the myriad benefits that come with working as a freelancer. Currently, there are about 31 million people in work in Britain, and already 4.6 million are self-employed, thereby displaying the vitality of the freelance economy. In fact, so popular is freelancing becoming that it has even been suggested that the government needs to devise a new tax and other policies to support freelancers. Freelancing would seem to be the future of employment and the way forward. It is certainly well worth considering freelancing if you are doubtful about committing to working in a structured environment. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.